Good morning. And to those of you who are visiting uh, with us this morning from churches across the, uh, the Cherville area, and for those of you who are joining us by WCSL, and those of you who are coming to us on our uh, Facebook stream, both here at First Presbyterian Church and also the Association of the Cherville Ministers, I, I want to welcome you. I'm standing in for Dale Hendricks, who is our uh, president of the Ministerial Association this year. He's out of town, but he will be here on Friday to bring God's word to us. Now, personally, I'll just tell you, I have been blessed two days, and I'm looking forward to a blessing of the third day. Uh, if you've been blessed, would you just say amen? amen. Well, good. That uh, in good old uh, uh, local uh, North Carolina colloquialism, that means ain't it so. And it is so that we have truly been blessed and we're looking forward for that blessing to continue as God pours out his richest blessing upon all of those who hear, who pray, who sing, and who uh, are uh, worshiping uh, his holy word during this holy week. We do want to thank the ministers, uh, different ministers from different congregations who are here uh, participating in our service, preaching you know, every day, uh, I allow them to introduce themselves when they come up to the mic. But I also want to thank WCSL for, for providing a daily broadcast. I do want to thank uh, the different churches who are providing meals for us after this service in here. We go down, you know, one of the, one of the five earmarks of the early Christian churches. They gathered together to break bread. And uh, we continue to celebrate that wonderful blessing and that earmark of the early Christian church as we are able to gather because of the pandemic. We haven't been able to do that in the last three years or so, and it's just a wonderful opportunity to be with other Christians as, as we celebrate the coming of Easter here during Holy Week. The offering we're receiving each day is equally divided between the ministries of the Cherville Area Ministries and also the Cherville Ministerial Association and at the end of the week, we will be uh, delivering a check down to the Cherville Ministerial Association. The bulletins that are here are prepared for the entire week. Please leave your bulletin there on the seat when you leave. And then on Friday, you're free to take those. Um, we've also been blessed by some, some great singing. And uh, for those ministers yesterday who were singing, yeah, I can blow my own horn. I thought we did an outstanding job, don't you? Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, to God be the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, let me add this. Friday afternoon at 1.15, weather permitting, we will gather here in front of this church and begin our crosswalk, which will end in the cemetery. And then on Sunday morning uh, at sunrise service at 7 o'clock, uh, in the uh, in the in the uh, uh, cemetery here in Cherville, the Memorial Cemetery, we will have a special guest, some guy named Peter. He's on his way to Rome, and he's going to stop by and deliver some good news here to Cherville. So I hope that you'll be able to be present, and we're looking at the possibility of having that on Facebook as well. I don't know. We'll we'll just try to work that out. People have been asking for it. Uh, I'm going to invite right now um, Gina Spiker, if she would come forward and lead us in a hymn this morning. But first, before she does, I want to have a prayer. And if you are looking and reading in Matthew, you'll know on down from our text this morning that our pastor will be preaching on, on down in the uh, 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 the, uh, in the in the text, we hear we find these soldiers who are gathered when the centurion and those with him were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened. They were terrified and exclaimed, "Surely, he was the Son of God." Thanks be to God for this wonderful word. I'm going to be offering a prayer right now from one of our ministers from our community from a long time back, Dr. Dexter Moser, who was a Lutheran minister and who um, 
edited and wrote this little book, and I'm using it during this week. Let us pray. Father, may we follow the example of the centurion who he and his soldiers were guarding the cross as Jesus hung there. And in the hours of his suffering, as it ticked away, we read of miraculous things that happened when the Spirit of Christ left this earth and it caused this centurion to exclaim as faith grew minute by minute and hour by hour and month by month and year by year, we feel his spirit speaking to and through us and our own struggles of life. So, Father, hear our prayers today. Yes, Father, hear our fervent prayer and let the world, O Christ, hear this prayer and lift be lifted high to thee. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Gina. Turn in your hymn books to page 92. Let's stand and sing Beneath the Cross of Jesus.
Thank you, Gina. I'm not going to preach after that. <laughs> I invite you to stand for a reading of the Holy Gospel. From the Gospel of St. Matthew, the, the 27th chapter. I'm going to be starting to, uh, to read at the, at the 27th verse. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped Jesus, and they put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand, and they knelt before him, and they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on Jesus. They took the reed, and they struck him on the head. And after mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own his clothes on him, his own clothes on him. And then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they offered him wine to drink and mixed with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. And then they sat down there and kept watch over Jesus. This is the gospel of our Lord. I invite you to be seated. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for your word. I pray this day that you would open my mouth to preach your word and open our ears, our souls, and our hearts to hear your word and to feel your presence in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm Pastor Scott Holmesley. I'm pastor of St. John's Lutheran Church here in Cherville. And I've been honored to, to be, be able to come back and come back home, and I've been the pastor over there since September. Um, however, I must let you know I'm very intimidated standing here in this pulpit because this is the church I grew up in. And I've seen the greats, the great Reverend Bill Lowe preach from this pulpit. I've seen George Riddle preach from this pulpit, and I've seen Reed Irwin and a whole other string of pastors, and I tell you what, when we talk about unworthy, this boy feels unworthy standing right here. So we'll see how it goes. I grew up out on Mary's Grove Road, and at any point in time growing up out in the country, we had somewhere between one and twelve cats. You know, they say when it's raining really hard, it rains cats and dogs. Well, out in the country where I grew up, it rained more cats than dogs because we, we actually just ended up with cats. We never bought any. We never went, you know, they were just always cats. And let me tell you, we never went to PetSmart. Well, first of all, it didn't exist when I was little. But we didn't go to PetSmart. We didn't buy little cat toys because our cats did not stay in the house. But oftentimes when I was a little boy, I'd look out in the backyard, and as I'd look out into that backyard, I'd see a cat, and it would be playing. And I'd run out there, and I'd start watching, and I'd watch this cat. Then if I looked close in the grass, a lot of times I'd see this little mouse. And those, that cat was playing with that mouse. That, that cat would bat that mouse around, you know, and the, the mouse would run and run here and run there and run around, and that cat would just kind of jump around and find it, you know, and it was kind of funny. You'd kind of laugh about it, you, you know, and now we, you know, we buy those kind of toys for our cats. You know, they, we let them in the house. Y'all let cats in the house? Well, yeah, we do too. And they play. And it's kind of fun to watch. But when you're watching a real game of cat and mouse, it's serious. It's serious for the mouse. Because it's a game. Most of the time of life and death. When you really think about it. When I started to prepare for this sermon today, I started thinking about a cat 
and a mouse and the little game and how we joke about it. We talk about cat and mouse. I mean, it's, and it's great. Well, I'll still joke about it. But in some ways, as I begin to read this gospel lesson, there's a little game of cat and mouse kind of being played here. Jesus has been arrested. Jesus is in trouble. And the soldiers begin to play with it. So they call you the king of the Jews. Well, okay. We'll make you a king. Let's get a robe put on him. Let's get him a crown. But not just, not one of those real nice crowns, you know, with all the, 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 the gemstones and everything. A crown of thorns. Let's, let's put that on his head. And, and give him a reed so that that can be his, that, that can be his scepter. Several years ago, actually in 2004, a movie came out directed by Mel Gibson. Many of you probably saw it. A lot of people talked about it. There was good news and bad news about it, but it was called The Passion of the Christ. I was standing in the narthex of the church I served in Pinehurst, North Carolina, and a couple members came up on the weekend that came out, and they go, Pastor Scott, have you seen The Passion of the Christ? I said, no. No, I haven't. Oh, you've got to go see it. You, you have just got to go see it. I said, well, you know, there's just some things that I have a picture of in my mind that I don't need to see. There's just some things that I don't want to see. You know, there's just some things I don't want to see. But Pastor Scott, you've got to go see it. I mean, they've made it look real. I looked at him and I said, it is real. It happened. And sometimes I think that, I think that 2,000 years of time has, has somewhat helped us to maybe sensitize this horrible event. No, I, I never went to see that movie. I've not seen it on TV. I've, not that I'm adverse to it. It's just that I can close my eyes and know that this is not a cat and mouse game. This is not a game that they're playing with Jesus. They're serious, and he is going to die and they're not going to make it look real. They're going to make it real. It's going to happen. And they mock him. And we stand back and we look at that and we, we don't know what to do with it. We stand back and we stand in the crowd and we, we know we can't stop it. It's going to happen. It's real. And now, 2,000 years later, we know that that is the Messiah. That's the king. Of, that's the king. That's the savior of the world. And we want to. So we just really, when we read this, or at least I do, when I read this gospel, I just want Jesus to be God and go zap. Kind of like when I was out there in the backyard, I felt it was my job to pick up that mouse. But I couldn't. And here we find Jesus being mocked. I'm reminded of the temptations of Jesus. I'm reminded of Jesus being out there in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. And I'm reminded of the tempter, the devil, coming to Jesus after 40 days and 40 nights of not eating. Listen, I'm trying to be quick so we can get down there and have a sandwich. I can't imagine 
But the devil says to Jesus, turn this stone into bread. Boy, let me tell you, if it had been me, I'd have snapped my fingers and I'd have been eating rye bread in a heartbeat. But Jesus said, no. You don't put the Lord your God to the test. Then the devil offered Jesus materials and power, offered him everything. But yet Jesus, knowing that he was the Son of God, and the devil knowing that he was the Son of God, said no. And here as these soldiers are mocking Jesus, as they're making fun of him, as they're calling him a fake king, he doesn't. He doesn't lash out. And my friends, it's real. His love is so strong for us that his mission was to go to the cross. His mission was to die for you and for me. That's his mission. And, and there's no way that we can make it nice. There's no way, because it's real. This is real life. I don't know if you've ever seen the musical, the, the movie that came out in the 70s, Jesus Christ Superstar, but it's one of my favorite movies. I, uh, I watch it a lot. Uh, actually, a couple weeks ago, went down to Charlotte to see it live. I really like Jesus Christ Superstar. I know, again, kind of like the Passion of the Christ. It's controversial because some people have some questions, and that's okay. But for me, I really like it. It helps to center my faith in many ways. But one of the things, for those of you who have seen it and who remember it, at the very end, they leave Jesus on the cross. They don't take him off the cross. He stays there. And some people who have argued theology will say, well, I didn't like it because they didn't take Jesus off the cross. And as I stand before you now, I want to make this cat and mouse story a cat and mouse story. I want to say to you that... that it's not as bad as it is because guess what? Sunday's coming. But Sunday's not here yet. And I think that's what's good for us. It's good for us to sort of stop and understand that it's real. Jesus is going to die for us. Oh, we know the rest of the story, and we're going to celebrate with ham and mashed potatoes. We're going to come to church on Sunday, and we're going to sing those glorious Easter songs, and it's going to be a, a, a blowout. But today on Wednesday, I think we need to sit. I think we need to sit with Jesus a little bit and feel that mocking and feel that suffering and feel that pain because you see that pain that suffering and that mocking makes Sunday so much better so much better because we live our lives knowing that we have a Savior we've been marked with the cross of Christ we've been sealed with the Holy Spirit and we live in the promise of eternal life because Jesus didn't stay on the cross. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, what a joy it is to gather with all our brothers and sisters in Christ here for Holy Week. Lord, as we come from our various corners of our various churches and denominations, Lord, we thank you that you can gather us here bound by your cross, bound by your resurrection. And we thank you that you give us this opportunity to come together. 
In just a few minutes, we're going to enjoy some time by breaking bread together, and we pray that you would bless the food we're about to eat for lunch, and bless those that have prepared this food for us, and we pray, Lord, that you would watch over all of us this day, especially those who need a special measure of your care. We pray, Lord, that you would bring peace to, to the world, your world. We pray that you would be with our leaders and help them to lead us with peace and with justice. And we thank you, Lord, for the many blessings that you have bestowed on us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, y'all are, are nice. Thank you. 